I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. Hey, 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 what's up, world? Welcome to another edition of I Mix What I Like Live right here on Black Power Media. And as you can see, the superstars are already piling in the <laughs> building. Good morning, Sister Jackie. It's good to see you again. Good morning. Good morning, welcome, brother. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I don't know. I, hello. He's down there behind the sign. Oh, right on, right on. <laughs> you know what? We have, um, in addition to, to the good Roberto Duran, we have uh, a guest puppy this week. Oh. Uh, little Scooby is in the building. Oh. Uh, oh. Literally three pounds, not even, barely three pounds, you know, brand oh. new. Uh, so so I don't know what the background might end up sounding like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here shortly. I would be, I would yeah. be used to it. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if Brother Kaba is joining us this morning. We have uh, a shout out to 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 Brother Josh, who who is is uh, a, a, a one of our I mix what I like staff crew uh, is working with us this morning. Big up, Josh. And uh, shout out to to his colleague Aaliyah and uh, everybody joining us this morning. So, uh, and to those who will see this later, we appreciate you as well. So Jackie, I don't know what you have in mind for us this morning. Uh, I have a couple of stories, not even too much too much heavy. To, to, for, to a certain extent, I was thinking uh, that from my perspective, this might be, be a relative quote unquote light day um, uh, uh, politically, you know, certainly no, no major heavy lifting. I know people might be, I don't know how people dealt with yesterday. Yeah. Um, but, but, uh, I don't, you know, people might be recovering or what, whatever, whatnot, uh, you know, yeah, how did you I, all I mean, deal with yesterday? How did it go yesterday? So, I mean, the, I, um, went over to my aunt's house, my aunt, uh, and uncle, uh, live uh, like five minutes away from me, you know, over on, uh, um, over off of, uh, what is the South Capitol street? And only, mm -hmm. you know, so that I, I wouldn't be by myself. Because, you know, yesterday was hard. Um, you mm -hmm. know, it was the first, first, this is the first holiday season without Abdus. So, right, right. you know, it's, um, it, it was, you know, it was kind of rough in the morning. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I felt a little better. I, I, um, I actually kind of intentionally waited to, until yesterday to, um, set up my uh uh altar uh because he mm. had set up a small altar uh for his mom and my mom um mm. but you know so then i had to kind of change things around so you know i got up yesterday and and you know was feeling pretty you know pretty crappy <laughs> and and just really you know started uh my prayers and all that and and just got to work putting the altar together and that was and I and it, and I did it. I actually did it as I was listening to the um, uh, the Native American National Day of Mourning uh, stream on WPFW, which I pretty much have PFW on in the house almost all the time. Um, and so I was listening to that, and I was you know dealing with my you know my my grief and uh, you know setting up my altar and and doing you know my my prayers and my ancestor talk and you know by the time i got done with all that it's like well okay i've kind of i'm, I'm kind of feeling a little better so uh you know i went over to my aunt's house and and uh just so you know i wouldn't be by myself and she was like well if you're gonna come over you should like bake a pie or something 
<laughs> she, don't just come over here with yeah, your feelings and your emotions. Exactly. <laughs> don't, don't just bring them feelings. I know you feel bad, but I mean, if you'll come over, bake a pie or whatever, you gonna bake a pie? I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll bake a pie. All right, then, I'll, you know, but I'll, so I did. I baked a, uh, I baked a couple pecan pies, and then she called back and she was like, well, I mean, I got some cabbage, so you know. I don't know if you want the other. I thought, okay, fine, Aunt Claire. I'll make some greens. Okay, I will make some greens. So ended up taking you know, some food over and hung out with my cousin for my, uh, you know, who I haven't really uh, seen. He, he, you know, we were very close. Um, since, we haven't really hung out with him since uh, the funeral. Had a great, great time. So you know, yesterday was. Um, it, it was beautiful. We, we, we actually watched the rest of the, um, of the national day of mourning ceremony, um, and the, 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 mar the procession and all that kind of stuff. As we were there, I, they turned off the football. And it was funny because one of my cousins who is a young brother just got graduated from college. He was like, um, and they called me aunt Lynn cause they haven't figured out the, that I'm not their aunt. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm very close to their brother. Their, their father, it, it, you I'm, know, but I'm that's like a yeah, yeah, but that's, it's that's a, a black thing. That's just yeah, yeah. So it's just like he was like, Aunt Lynn, um, this football game is whack. Uh, what's what 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 Native American stuff can we watch? I was like, Oh, word, okay. So <laughs> you know, pull out the out the uh, the the, the uh, um, the iPad and and cue up the Native American Day of Mourning procession and the you know the program uh afterward that somebody was live streaming and then they kind of vibed on that and there were you know that was, it was a really good day had a lot of wine had a lot of my uncle Junie's homemade wine my uncle Junie makes wine yes and liqueur and i would not drink it without uh, like plans to either stay somewhere or to be very judicious with drinking so it was a good day. It was a good day. But but my uncle Junie is one of those country dudes who, you know, cooks, makes stuff with his hands, and makes a little wine. <laughs> so you know, right on. Yeah, ultimately it was it was a very rich it was a very rich day of of you know ancestor worship for me. You know, so what did you right guys on, do? Right on. You, how how did you roll yesterday? So we had, uh, and I'm going to have to wait until next week to fully say what went on because we had, um, there's a, there's, there's a series of surprises involved. So I don't want to, I don't want to say too much, but we had, we had a very non, I won't say it was a political day, but it was a very non- it was a very regular day because there, there's a series of surprises being built because, as I said, uh, uh, this week is also uh, the birthday of my youngest and my mother. So, yeah. So in preparation for that, for the for the the, the unveiling of a series of surprises, yesterday uh -huh. was really dulled down mm -hmm. um, more than even usual. So we didn't have, you know. I mean, nothing, it was almost an unrecognizable, you know, day over here. Um, we already don't watch American football. Uh, um, you know what I mean? So, you know, that wasn't even on anyway. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, that there was it. And you, yeah. You'll be proud of me. I actually watched 15 minutes of a football game. I did. I did. You mean world football? I, well, it was it was an American team. I thought it was weird. It was American teams. And one of the major networks that aired, uh, you know, football, American football, the NFL, mm -hmm. um, they they ended the NFL game. And then this this soccer game came on. And I was like, oh, wow. why did they start doing, doing that? So I was like, OK, well, let me check this out for a minute. And. You know, and now you see you see how amazing it is, and and are gonna make some some major life changes. <laughs> I watched fifteen minutes of it, Jared. <laughs> let's let's not be making any big prop, big proclamations right now. But I 
I, I watched 15 minutes of it, okay? <laughs> I mean, All right. Well, so listen, so I, so we just got word for Brother Kaba. He's gonna be he's gonna be on on in a few minutes here. You um and uh we'll see what he wants to wants to get into. Do you have any issues, stories, topics you wanted us to get to this morning? Um uh or otherwise uh, like I said, I have a, just a couple of 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 you know, relatively light fare that we can we can but what 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 do you have? What what you got? What's on your mind today? What's going on? You know, I was I was thinking about um, you know, the the whole written house. And I don't mean to make this like, you know, the heaviest thing in the world <laughs> right off the bat. No, I mean it's cool. I don't I don't mind. I just you know, I didn't have anything, you know, like <laughs> But you know, he apparently did an interview uh on Fox News, I guess, where he he said that, you know, well, he supports Black Lives Matter and, and you know, mm-hmm. he supports peaceful protest. And, and, you know, I thought it was wild that nobody asked him, <laughs> well, what other protests did you go to? You know, mm-hmm. did, you, did, did, your, did your mama drive you to any other? Mm-hmm. You know, did you was it was there a protest in your state, in your city where you live? Did you go to that protest without a gun? Did you go? You know, so I, I just I just thought that was really interesting that that as he's coming out and doing the you know I'm not a racist PR tour because that's that's what that is that's that's all mm-hmm. that is. Um, he's 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 strategically saying you know oh I support Black Lives Matter as you know and he said oh I think it's there needs to be you know ch- systemic change or whatever he's saying the words. You know, to because you know words are important, and um, there's been a lot of pushback on these words. So he's been saying the words to uh, kind of uh, you know calm down the folks who will surely um, continue to uh, harass and criticize him probably until the day he dies, which honestly he deserves. Um, but I, I just thought it was interesting that you know the interviewer. Uh, I can't remember who it was, didn't ask, well, what other protests have you been to? Did you, did you support Black Lives Matter in any other way? I mean, that did, have you gone to any other protests with or without a gun? <laughs> you know? So, well, I mean, but I thought in America is crap. <laughs> did he, did he, again, I, I haven't followed the, the, the trial or the aftermath that closely. So, um, but, but, Whatever what I did, what I understood, and, and this could easily be wrong, was that it was pretty clear that he is he has made pretty clear, and it wasn't challenged that he was not there in support of Black Lives Matter. He was there, or 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 Jacob Blake. He was there because he wanted to protect property right. of a car sir, car whatever place that themselves seems to have gone on record saying they did not ask for that protection. Exactly. Yes. There's so, a whole lot of, yeah. So th- th- it wasn't an issue of, uh, again, again, this is why I think even though I, so I, I, I didn't really, there was one part of what I said yesterday that I didn't, that I left out of what I had intended to say that I would like, and that is that I would like in theory to live in a world that has laws that has the 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 nominal claims that are attached to this country's court system that is where you have a defense where you have a a a, a judgment by peers where you have people you know going through the law and and going back at, like i like the in, intellectually at least i like Let's break it down. Let's see what is it. It wasn't illegal at what point, blah, blah, blah. I, that, and that people should be defended. I like all of that. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, uh, so on that and, and to that end, I like that it appears that by the letter of the law. He is protected by self-defense. And that is uh, uh, and again, just the base research that I did looking into this is that uh, by no means being an expert and in part to settle a household dispute. So I admit part of this is just, you know, petty J in effect, but, but what the point was that, that particularly in Wisconsin, where the laws are much more liberal, again, pun intended, when it comes to self-defense and carrying weapons, 
that even if he was illegally possessing the firearm, which I believe was the case based on his age and whatever, that even in that instance, if you precipitate an illegal act against someone who then responds to you against you with deadly force without having allowed you to properly retreat, even if you are attempting to, you are protected by self-defense. And that person can be charged uh, with yeah. some level of, 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 I don't know, manslaughter, you know, some, some homicide charge if they don't let you retreat, which I thought is, is, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's asking a lot, but, but in this sense, the other, the point being that when you go through all the steps of what happened that night, Rittenhouse seems to be legally protected. But what is also clear to me that is not definable in, in, in law in this way is that again he was really only he was never going to be convicted if at all possible because the people he killed in some ways in the the twisted logic of white supremacy is even worse than had he shot black protesters Mm -hmm. because he shot white people who were in theory supporting and in solidarity with black protesters which is just just in that code of yeah. conduct and whiteness is yeah. is a is a treacherous act. That's and that's so, treason to them. Yeah. So when you start with, with when so when it starts with you didn't even go there claiming like you weren't rocking your your Black Lives Matter shirt. You weren't over there. You know. You know. Saying I'm here to protect protesters from right. threats of violence against them. That might have been even hot. That might have even had me like, let's let's get my written house shirt on and all of that. Like that's hot. But you're not doing that. You are I'm there to protect property. Right. From an institution that's not even asking for it. And you're bringing guns to a daggone protest. Like uh anyway. I do also think it's somewhat I, I in a, in a, and again, in, a, in an immature, petty way, I do find there is a level of comedy that in all of these protests, the the the, the Black Lives Matter protests, the 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 violence that get that I'm I don't remember any other violence associated with black pit protesters, gun violence that is. Mm-hmm. It, it just mm-hmm. seems wild that the first gunfight at a Black Lives Matter protest <laughs> is among whites. I, yeah. um, I, I think so. that's true. Yeah. And, and and again, I mean, there there hasn't been there hasn't been adequate coverage of all of the violence that has occurred at uh, protests that happened, you know, during the, the summer of uprising um, last year, the, the, the car attacks, the, you know, baseball bat assaults, mm. you know, the, all, the 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 people. Uh, the the guy with the bow and arrow <laughs> shooting arrows at people, you know, the guy who uh, uh, shot at people at a at a prayer vigil uh, in I think it was New Mexico. I think um, not, there was never adequate coverage of that. The 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 white witnesses who actually killed uh, two um, uh, two cops and tried to blame those murders on Black Lives Matter protesters in California. Nobody talks mm. about those. There has not been adequate coverage of any mm. of that violence that has happened against protesters all across the country, all throughout the summer. And that's aside mm. from you know the police terrorism uh, the coordinated police terrorism. But you know, you know, now we have to, you know, we have this 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 Rittenhouse dude talking about he supports Black Lives Matter. Um, and he thinks there needs to be systemic change. Now, I'm, I'm not against, you know, s- systemic change um, being facilitated with uh, certain forceful assistance, but that's not what he was doing. <laughs> that was right. That's that's not right. what he was doing at all. Right. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> other thing yeah Jared, go ahead if you had go something ahead. else mm-hmm. um no i do go ahead but go ahead yeah no no no. we're good good so just really quick since you know today mm-hmm. is that thing called black friday <laughs> and there you know there's a lot of mythology around 
what you know what where Black Friday started, what it is, and how it all this kind of stuff. And I love this kind of stuff. I love, um, I like history. It's fascinating, mm-hmm. um, especially covering up uh, the lies about <laughs> history. Um, so Black Friday, as a lot of people believe. <clears throat> Uh, is a day that the retailers um, pretty much make up the profits that they've lost uh, throughout the rest of the year. The the Black Friday uh, is uh, the day between, well, it's the period of time that starts between uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving, which people call Black Friday, and like Christmas, where they think retailers make all of their money. And instead of their books being in the red, meaning that they they are not making a profit, their books uh, are become in the black from all of the profit they make. And mm-hmm. it, right, people, and and there may be a modicum of truth to that, but that is not where Black Friday got started, not at all. Black Friday uh, was actually begun in uh, the first instance of Black Friday. The words Black Friday being used actually came uh, came about on September 24th in 1869. Why is that day important? Because it's the date of a financial panic that was started by gold speculators. (laughs) So stop playing. No, I'm not kidding. So, <laughs> so, so in a very capitalist fashion, uh, financier Jay Gould and railway businessman James Fisk uh, attempted to corner the gold market in the U.S. And their doing that resulted in a financial panic and the collapse of the gold market. And that was called the first Black Friday. Um 60 years later, on October 29, 1929, the the next stock market crash was referred to as Black Tuesday. And that was the onset of the Great Depression. So the idea that the word, you know, black is in, in the financial world is used to really, uh, in history, has been used to connote disaster. I don't know why people think that, you know, but you don't, People don't know this history, so they don't know that this is where this phrase comes from. Also, Black Friday, related to this day, also has really negative connotations. Um, Black Friday was used by the Philadelphia traffic cops in uh, 1960 to describe the day after Thanksgiving because they had to work 12-hour shifts in terrible traffic. And this was... Uh, 10 years after factory managers um, started referring to Black Friday, the Thursday after Thanksgiving is Black Friday because so many factory workers would call in sick because, I mean, they just had Thanksgiving and they didn't want to come to work. So so they just wanted to extend their weekend. So the, the factory owners looked at the Thursday after Thanksgiving as a negative day for them because all their workers were calling in sick. Um. So after the Philadelphia cops started calling their having a work Friday in this, you know, post uh, uh, Thanksgiving day rush of traffic, it started catching on around the country. And then in the 1980s, Black Friday was kind of, it was co-opted by retailers, by the business world to describe what we believe today is where Black Friday came from, this whole chasing of profits or making up of profits on this day between today and Christmas. Um, and, but that was like 20 years after the term started being regularly used in this country and it was associated with Philadelphia cops. Um, so there's this other myth about Black Friday that you know it, wow. it actually relates to slavery, but there's actually no proof in that. There's actually no evidence that, um, that you know, uh, slave owners or slave auctioneers uh, gave uh, people who wanted to purchase enslaved people a discount on the Friday after Thanksgiving. Every day was Black Friday, slave people, because every day uh, somebody else owned them and profited from them. Um, but 
things are changing, I think, around the world uh, in the um, in in the capitalist pursuit mm. of profit around Black Friday because today the Guardian uh, is reporting that let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, independent retailers, about 85% of the independent retailers in the UK, and not every country does Black Friday because not every country is capitalist. And, you know, not a, a lot of countries explicitly uh, ban Black Friday. They're just countries like Vietnam. No, you're not. Uh, China doesn't do it. You know, a lot of other countries just do not do it. Um, but in the UK this year, independent boy, uh, independent retailers, uh, about 85% of them are planning to shut down their websites, donate their profits to charity and plant trees as a part of an effort to protest rabid consu consumerism encouraged by large online retailers like Amazon and such. And this year, The Guardian reports that the largest percentage of resellers, uh, retailers will participate in this boycott. So apparently they've done this every year. And they're saying that about 85% of independent retailers will participate in this uh, boycott of Black Friday. And not only that, speaking of Amazon, um, there is a NAF strike um, against Amazon that I think is going on that is starting today. Uh, let me see really quickly. Come on now. Come back over here. No, that's actually the, the only... Slow. No, it's all good. I mean, the, 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 the only thing that... Well, the first thing that came to my mind when you were talking about that, that, that boycott is, is the problem of the uh total capture these independent businesses um ref uh reflect like what 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 amount of all that is spent goes to those businesses anyway right um yeah. so yeah. so yes it's important in terms of solidarity even symbolism even building uh um just making some noise but but uh these these big retailers uh, dominate so much of the, the 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 marketplace that I'm not even sure to what extent uh, a banding together of this many uh, independent uh, retail you know businesses could could you know uh, impact that. But I'm you know anyway. Sh yes. sh shout out to them. I'm glad that they're doing it for sure. No, I I agree. I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right. It, it's it's I think we're at the end stage of capitalism where you know this is mm. not it, it's not. It's a good move, but it's not going to stop the, the the decline of capitalism. Um, and, mm. and, you know, but it, but it's a good thing to do. But I think the more important thing that's happening today in regard to people uh, uh, pushing back on Black Friday, as we know it today, is that Amazon in 20 countries will strike or protest today for better working conditions. And this is a campaign... Right that was organized by an organization called Make Amazon Pay. You can go to their website and get all their information about where all of the protests or strikes are, are happening. Um, so yeah, I, I thought it was uh, really interesting to talk about uh, this day, Black Friday, from the context of where it really comes from, especially since where it really comes from um, originates in capitalist exploitation and um, how capitalism is used uh, to make the rich richer and how they can use it and manipulate it to um, uh, legitimize their greed and cause destruction in doing that. They caused, um, they caused the market crash. They caused the, they caused the gold market crash. You know, then there was the other stock market crash after that, you know, then then there was, you know, all this. So there are all these negative connotations with Black Friday um, in regard to capitalism. And then all of a sudden, you know, all that history is whitewashed, ignored. We don't talk about it. And now Black Friday is, hey, great deals. And I'm I'm not mad at anybody who 
go shopping on Friday because some of the deal this day because some of the deals are great. Some things you can't afford unless it's on this day. And I, I so I, I don't have any judgment, but I think we need to be clear, just like we need to be clear about what Thanksgiving is. We need to be clear about what Black Friday really is. It is it is yet another no, I, white supremacist capitalist whitewashing of this shitty system of capitalism. No, I appreciate that, and I I mean, listen, I don't I don't think, uh, and I and I think you know consistently whether we're talking about uh, um, art uh, or consumerism, y- yes, people can obviously do things on their own to improve whatever but i don't think that should be the focus of the analysis so i think that 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 uh um if people go shopping because the 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 mass amounts of um propaganda or advertising or however people want to describe it is encouraging it and people have been convinced over the process of uh you know uh well over time through a process of acculturation and again propaganda to 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 want to shop uh, then the fact that they go shopping, I don't think is is the issue. I think that the issue then that's why I keep coming back to we have to have bigger movements and 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 policies that make the consumption either impossible or beneficial uh, to a wider ar- 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 array of people. So if we said Black Friday and you go shopping and get your deals and like a first step on our way to some sort of better world was that the 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 wealth produced went to cover uh you know universal health care you know something so you know something what it's a silly stuff like that i think that would be you know that's one thing but but uh um but of course people are going to be manipulated into going shopping uh, today because there is an endless amount of of messaging that encourages it and then you build it in to a day off and a holiday i mean it's 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 and of course, this is part of. I, I think didn't the fiscal year officially just begin? Uh, in terms yeah. of 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 the way Wall Street works, so this is yeah. when they begin counting. You know how they. You know, so this is where they make their money, a bulk of their money for the year. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, I mean, you know, um, but I think it's perfect because we didn't even plan this. But I do think it's perfect that that it works. And brother, cop by my bad man. I know you popped in. Good morning. Let me just let me greet you. I didn't even. You know, I'm just. You know, moving on here. My bad. Um, good, morning. good to see you. Good as morning. always, good morning, Sister Jackie. Good morning, Brother Kaba. Fabulous yes. to be on with you today. It's I'm a so pleasure excited. to be on with you, and you know, it's okay to be on with Doctor Ball. It's great to be on with you. Uh, appreciate <laughs> it, that. You, and- you suffer me to get time with Jackie. I get it. That, I mean, it I, I fully understand. <laughs> I, I fully this understand. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, I thought I thought that the Black Friday meant um, that you know we get to go punch each other in the face over a TV and stuff. I thought that's usually what, you know, you get a that's, black that's eye it. Party, you know, because I that's mean, that's usually what happens. Uh, you know, people like the goddamn fool on, <laughs> on, on, on Black Friday. You know, I, and, 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 I, that, and I'll, say, I'll say to some people who shall remain nameless, I, I know that they used to go to do Black Friday, not necessarily to buy stuff, but so that they can have excuses to elbow and punch people in the face. I'm not gonna say any names. Oh, wow. say, but wow. it's just people, some people that I may know uh, may have may have done that also in the past. It, but Jackie, you were, you were saying when you were talking about the people, all the people who all of the protests or the violence that hasn't been covered, I immediately thought of this brother in in uh, Wak- Waukesha. I guess they, they they he's getting a whole lot of coverage, you know, for, for mowing down you know people, right? Uh, yeah. you know, you know uh, as opposed to the, the mm-hmm. white folks who who do this, you know, something similar. So I thought that was pretty interesting. That you know, yeah. he's he's become the poster well, because, child of violence. Because he he not only killed white people, but apparently this was part of his uh uh goal in support of at least in the one story we talked about yesterday, in in in, in support of his his plans uh um to promote uh the true black Israelites to their rightful place uh inspired by hitler and etc and so forth so i mean of course fox and other outlets are going to have a lot of i mean it, you know if the poster child of 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 white supremacist violence could be a brother who kills white people <laughs> and i know that and i can just see the headlines coming now here's your critical race theory <laughs> it's like 
Yeah, I mean, so yeah, no, he's good. He is definitely. If you want your fifteen minutes of fame, I mean, and, uh, and, you know, and apparently so, you know. one of one of the going down to the Aubrey case, you know, one of the one of the 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 killer's uh, sister uh, had mentioned that she had posted a picture of uh, Amar Aubrey's body on her social media. Uh, and and she said the reason why she did it was because she's a she's a fan of of true crime. Oh Jesus! So uh, oh, so wow. which which was which was an interesting take because if she, you know she believed that her brother was innocent, so it's like well what crime was committed then? Uh, right. So why would you why would you post that? But of course you know we're looking for rhyme and reason for for where there is none and that never has been. No. Uh, but I just found that interesting too, you know, with I these mean, people. I'm, I'm a fan of true wow. crime too, but. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, you know, running down to the, you know, latest, uh, shooting in, in, in my neighborhood and posting pictures of the victims, Yeah, you know, on social media, I, I, media, I, I love me some, some, some true crime stories. I have no idea what's wrong with me, why I like those, but I do. But I mean, that's, that's just a, that's just a, a very thinly veiled excuse for, Hey, I want to post a picture of this dead Nigga, basically, and it's and it's and it's and it's a continuance of the legacy of of what they always did with the postcards of displaying our bodies, mm -hmm. you know, hanging after being lynched and so on. Hey, and so forth. speaking of which, since so, so first of all, since I'm having problems uh, sharing my screen because so let me tell you just real quick, this is this is what this is really what happened here. Um, uh, cue, cue the cue the cue the boomer jokes in the comments. No, I mean yeah, cue them up. But the, this is the reality. What so 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 the the, the I got a software upgrade on my computer. Mm. Upgraded the the Chrome browser, which is what the only thing you can use with Streamyard. And the and and um, I'm no longer able to. Uh, uh, and now when I log in th to to Streamyard through Chrome. Uh, there's a lag, so a video lag so, oh. that I can't correct. I did all kinds of tests, troubleshooting, chatted with the people at StreamYard who then suggested that I use Firefox. Firefox works in terms of the video and the lag is, is, is evidenced here, but you cannot share and you cannot share audio through Firefox to StreamYard. Hmm. So, so then, so then I thought for a minute there, I had it figured out where I could at least share the windows on without sound on uh, Firefox through Chrome. But now Firefox is not letting me share. So I'm going to put in the private chat a link. If one of you could pull this up and share it, I'd appreciate it. Or if Joshua can do it, uh, please, Pete, please do. Uh, uh, pull this up for me because it's a, it's a it's a perfect segue off what you were just talking about, Jackie. But but in the interim, I got hit with on Twitter. So and I think I was challenged, and I think I failed this challenge. So so I was tagged on Twitter the other day, uh, um, and this is not what this link is to. Thank you, Josh. I see it. All right, I'm, I'll pull it up myself in a second. I see you got it shared there. Thank you. Um, but 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 the video. And, and and I and some other black studies uh, faculty were being asked if we would share this video in our class. And the video is a, 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 a black MC who was doing a very anti Thanksgiving song. And the song, the, 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 the general message, I, I agree with, we shouldn't be celebrating. But the, but the theme is and then I had to actually turn off the sound and eventually I couldn't keep watching the video is that uh violent reprisals against even his own black family are, are necessary and required if they want to continue celebrating wow. thanksgiving and this you know and it gets very graphic including uh i mean he blood blood in a very bloody way dispatches of his family there's even um he kills a black baby holds up a baby by its feet and then, and, and then with a machete in the other hand, and then you just see blood splatter. I mean, it's it's, it's that kind of graphic. And then he's rhyming with blood all over him. And I was like, listen, listen, uh, I can't add to the to the to the, the to the black trauma point. I'm definitely not bringing that to the classroom. I, I don't try to be Mr. Puritan or whatever by any means. But I'm not. I am not going to subject yeah. students. 
to that. And I'm saying, and I'm saying, wait, I was like, again, this is the same thing. My problem with my problem with Hollywood, that the only, the violence is only meted out against black people. So here you have another example of it. I think, and so I just said, you know, I'll just, I said, so I'm let just going to so let me, let me, let me make Jackson. sure I got this. Let me make sure I got this right. So this is a person who's rapping about an anti thanks. It's an anti Thanksgiving message. And part right. of that, and part of that message is killing black people who celebrate Thanksgiving. That's yeah. So, so, so you're against, you're against, you're against, you're against violence. You're against genocide. And so your response to violence and genocide is to genocide your own people and not the people who were responsible for the genocide. Now, again, I did not hear all of the lyrics, so I don't know how this is argued in the song, because almost immediately I had to, I was, I was, I felt traumatized. I was just like, I just clicked play and, and, and um, immediately I was like, oh my God, I was just like, whoa. So, so. I don't know how the argument is laid out in its entirety, but that is the 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 theme. Yes, that's the yeah. And I and I and I'm I don't know if this is an attempt to make a, you know in a very graphic way the point. This is why we shouldn't be celebrating it. Nah. That's yeah. That was going to be my question, but which I get, but I can't I can't get to that conclusion that way. I don't want to do that, and I'm not going to nah. assign students to do that. So, but I think I was being and tested, and I think I failed. You, to do that? you know, the administration. Someone sent that to it's at me, not in the administration. Oh, no, okay. no, no, not the university. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. On Twitter, <laughs> somebody okay. tagged me and okay. several other Black Studies faculty, and they were asking, "Would any Africana Studies scholars share this in their classroom?" Like. And the way I took it, I could be wrong, but the way I took it initially was uh, who's bold enough to do this? And I was like, I'm not. <laughs> Brother uh, 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 Kwame Zulu Shabazz was like, I'm not. Uh, but it, it, it felt like we were being, you know, challenged, like, you know, are you a punk or are you going to be strong enough to, and I, and, and, and I was like, well. Do you know you this know, person? Uh, no, I, 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 no. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Usually when somebody so, so, tags me in something yeah. with like, who's bold enough to do this? And I bet you're not, I bet you're not. Like, I, I usually know it's some garbage because, you know, that's just like schoolyard, you know, bully kind of tactics. That's just, and you know, I have to be careful because that used to get me. You not yeah. gonna go stand up to him? I, right. Okay, you know, and then and, you know, and then thump 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 thump. You, thump, thump. Right. <laughs> you gonna take that? You gonna take that? You gonna, <laughs> are you gonna let him talk to you like that? The, oh, the quintessential damn. one. You gonna let him step on your Jordans? <laughs> them <laughs> things yeah. broke. You like, <laughs> like I'd be like, oh, oh. Not that I was not that I was ever an instigator. I just want to make sure that's clear. I, yeah. I was never. I was never. The yeah. Instigator. Look at this. Never face. you. Look, look at yeah, those. yeah. Look at that innocent. Absolutely. Look at that innocent face and that that absolutely. smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Absolutely convinced. Kaba yes. got many of dudes knocked out. Standing back, whispering something. <laughs> Many of dudes got knocked out. Uh, uh, yeah, but ain't trying to start nothing, man. Anyway, uh, my man, yeah. my man, be saying. I mean, he be saying some some soft man. Like you, man, man. man. I mean, did you man. see how he just stepped on them them Jordans? You see what he did? Man. Them, them, them fifties broke. <laughs> I ain't trying to start nothing, but is exactly how most shit got started. <laughs> yeah, like. I mean, I'm just saying, man. And you that, really gonna I'm let just that? Saying. You just, <laughs> just, just putting it out there. You just gonna let that slide like that? <laughs> and then I'd be the first one. Hoop -de -doop -de -doop -de -doop -de -doop. <laughs> you know, I was just like that kid, Mikey. Mikey, like you know, Mikey. Right. What it was? Oh, no, Mikey likes Mikey. it. He'll try anything. Yeah, boy. Like, like yeah, he'll try anything. <laughs> Yeah, I bet I bet Jared won't bust the window open and steal it. I bet Jared won't get it. I bet Jared. <laughs> they probably came with the light skin. Jared too light skin. All of that. All of that. The light skin dudes is scared. Them light skin dudes is punks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so so finally at 50 years it took me 50 years to get it but i'm finally like nah not this time i do you're not gonna mm -hmm. i bet jared will play the video in the class nope <laughs>
Not oh, no. Nope. Anyway, but listen. So 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 Jackie, this was the this was what I was going to get to when you're mm-hmm. talking about. Uh, uh, um, dang, now I forgot the segue because you were talking about um, strikes. <laughs> Yeah, oh my goodness. The, the Black Friday strikes today with the, the Black Friday Friday. stuff, exactly. Yeah. So 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 last week we and I'll put the link back in the show notes for this show, but we I think last week we played the the Black Google video with T Pain singing a Black Friday Google video with T Pain and and it was hot. It's a hot track. Yeah, can't front the video. Everything was great. The video, the pretty yeah. sister. Every, I mean, you know, everything. Like you can't. It was. It was undeniable. Uh, um, and that's sort of the point that I'm getting at. Like that's what I'm saying. Like how can people be expected in the absence of organized struggle of this of that to to withstand all of that? And then you turn around and you go to your black outlets, and you get more of the same. And so this was just this is just another example uh, again of um so the, the point of this story is just uh, again uh, um uh, the National Newspapers Association team up with Digital Mind State to deliver tech this tech this out news uh to a network of 47 million African Americans in time for the holiday season. And uh um uh Tech this out uh, focuses. So, so first of all, the NNPA, as I've talked about, written about, uh, is the largest. Uh, it's the the collect the the organization of the largest the largest organization of black owned and black targeted media outlets. Um, it is the black press, uh, as it's currently constituted with with uh, well over two hundred and thirty African. Uh, um, American or African, it just as it says here, African-owned newspapers uh, that engage over 47 million individuals per week. Um, and as the article says, again, of course, which is what brought it to my attention, uh, quoting, uh, well, as you see here, quote, I'm particularly excited about this partnership. The buying power of African Amer- of the African-American community is estimated at $1.3 trillion, and we can help these consumers make valuable, informed decisions, end quote, states Mike Johns, the founder and CEO at Digital Mind State and the interim editor for Tech This Out News. So, Digital Mind State. Uh, I'm honestly not even that familiar with what it is because I was really only focused on on the the, the consumer claims. But um, uh, the the partnership here between NNPA and Digital Mind State have forged is is a strategic partnership. They say to distribute tech news made for us through Digital Mind State's affiliate company, Tech This Out News. The partnership will cover things, it, uh, cover all things tech, ranging from the hottest tech gadgets to autonomous cars, robots, and space, the final frontier. So what I need to do real quick, uh, what I should have done and did not do, what, but what, anyway, what I will eventually look up with, with the uh, um, uh digital mind state group actually is for what this partnership is. But the point is, as as I quoted here uh, just a moment ago, the point is to make the claim that black people have this pile of money that doesn't exist, That, ca- but but the, the accurate claim here, as it's reported here, is that this is to help consumers make valuable and informed decisions, meaning the valuable and informed decision to spend their money with businesses and corporations and and uh that they don't own the wealth created from which will not be redistributed back to them uh and that fa- that uh, uh again fraudulently holds up and pr- uh, uh props up uh this capitalist economy uh and uh the the, the whiteness that sort of holds it together uh that is the sort of concrete that binds and holds it together so uh, it's really so. Ultimately, the segue I was trying to make is that that black consumers are not offered black people. Period. Consumers, people. Period, are not being offered the inaccurate enough um, uh, a- array of news and information from which they can make informed decisions, uh, politically, economically, socially, culturally, or otherwise. So that's. Uh, to me, that is the most pernicious 
part and mm-hmm. the most dastardly part for uh, of this whole thing uh, that of course you're going to turn to a black outlet and you want to support a black outlet and you want to support the pretty black face that is attractive and telling you what you want to hear. You want to support that. I get it, but it is intentionally um, partnered with, with um, someone else. It is, it is speaking on behalf of someone else. So uh, anyway, so that was just one of the, 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 Anyway, that was one of the stories I wanted to get to this morning. Well, and, you know, uh, I wanted to, yeah. to, to, you know, it, you know, it's it's hard for them to even, you know, pos- have some kind of real position on empowerment because, you know, the NNPA is is sponsored and funded by you know you know these big banks, you know, right, um, and so and so and all, and a lot of these other conglomerates. So there's no way that they can actually you know, truly uh, speak to real empowerment, except by exactly. leading, leading its it, their their readership, their viewership, uh, their subscribers or what have you back to these same entities. You know, ultimately, these these same entities are, are, are going to be the, the, the beneficiaries and they're the beneficiaries because is they're basically use they're using uh, organizations like the NMPA and all and many of the black uh, newspapers who are very dependent upon ad dollars. Um, they're, they're dependent upon them. If we if we recall back in 2008, uh, leading up to the election of, of, of Barack Obama, uh, you know, the NMPA was very upset with him because he would not place ads because that's how mm-hmm. a lot of newspapers and really media make a lot of money is uh, is via is via, in, in addition to Black Friday. <laughs> or, or, or at least as the myth goes uh and they, they definitely during election years they make a lot of money off of off of election you know campaign ads and things like that and so they were mad that obama did not do it and obama to, you know in a sense kind of knew well i got y'all i got the black folk yeah i don't need to have it why would That's i right. advertise the black folk i got them already you know mm-hmm. so it was hey. you know, that kind of situation one of the last articles I remember uh, journalistically published by the late uh, Ron Walters, who mm. uh, uh, was a great personal supporter of mine, whatever mm. our political differences were. Mm. Uh, so I have to, you know, always rem- remember that. But one of the last articles he wrote mm. was just before Obama's election in 08, uh, before he passed, that is, uh, uh, Walters, that is, that, where he said, basically as politely as he could obama uh where's that bag that and the point was the black press you know is waiting on it they they need it they they expect that quadrennial drop uh uh as the democratic party wants to convince black voters to come support them and when they didn't get that 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 expected you know payment they were hurt. They felt it. So that is in Kaba. You that is the that is it, and that's always the 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 uh, sort of the shell game or the hustle of capitalism. That it does promote itself as something that can be beaten if you put a, an appropriate prefix on it, like black or crony or you know some other softening term or you know to 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 make the the capitalism part you know go away. And it, in in terms of media, it makes the particular ownership irrelevant in terms of gender, sexual preference, identity, race, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter because if you want to survive, you got to get that ad revenue. And if you want the ad revenue, you got to manage. So, um, and by the way, just quickly looking at Digital Mind State, it is, it's, it's founders is a brother named Mike Johns, who I quoted in that story. And, and it looks like another thing that we've looked at previously here with uh, Roland Martin and John Hope Bryant and all of that, it looks like it, this is another black conduit, uh, a, a diverse marketing, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, intermediary between white corporations and they're a black pimps. consumer they're base. Yeah. They're pimps. They're pimps exactly. between, <laughs> between, yeah. between the public and the Johns who are the, yeah. who are the well, can, 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 can we, can, can, <laughs> can I do my best, uh, uh, Don Cheadle, uh, playing, uh, 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 what's my man's name? Uh, uh PD green, PD when he green. said, I don't want to say the man was a pimp. I just want to say he, t- this, he goes through the neighborhood, finds these nice young women in the community. And he says, I'm going to 
give you something new to wear and <laughs> put some money in your pocket and get you a hot meal and then put you out on this corner and have you work and spend some time with these gentlemen callers and then take your little bit of money and bring it back to me. Uh, but I'm not pimping. It's not a pimp relationship. It's, you know, so yeah, yeah. I, uh, I just want to get that money. Right there is the epitome of game right there. Even to say yeah. that you're not a pimp while you're pimping uh -huh. <laughs> is, is the epitome of pimping because you're a big old pimp. Pimping. You're a big old pimp. <laughs> I'm just helping move your money to their pockets. So There's pockets. no, what is the and issue? Yeah. And and taking a cut on the way, you know, is, what is the issue? Uh, so yeah, I, I, I mean, you know. By the way, uh, by the way, uh, by, the way yeah. by the way, to the to the remix and the audience, do yourself a favor after this is over and look up PD Green, How to Eat Watermelon. That uh, is. Thank you oh later. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh my God. Thank me later. <laughs> oh my God. It is it is wild to go back and see that to, when people watch that to be to actually try to you have to consciously remind to say to yourself, this was actually on TV. Yeah. Say like like you're not watching a YouTube clip, right. you're not nope, watching nope. the studio recreate. This was actually on television. <laughs> like like say that to yourself as you watch it, because unconsciously you may be aware of it, but you gotta remind yourself this was really on television and 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 uh and and the movie like most movies doesn't do the the real life justice i mean the, the, he was such a, whatever people think about it, i mean he was a wild character very, um very my, you know, my so, mom so, and I, I yeah. remember watching that episode when it aired cuz wow. my mom and oh, I, wow. my mom yeah, my mom, my aunt and I, and my uncle and I, we had this tr like tradition where every Friday night, once I got old enough to drink, I was, you know, <laughs> out of high school and doing my punk thing. And, and uh, on Friday nights, I would, we would all kind of hang out, watch TV and, uh, you know, have dinner together. And we would always end up watching political shows. We, we'd watch, uh, you know, Petey Green's Washington. We'd watch uh, 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 you know, the, uh, I can't remember the, the other brother's name, the journalist who had the show on uh, PBS. Um, but we sit there and we watch all these political shows and have these conversations. So we're, <laughs> we're sitting there watching a PD Green show that night and we were talking about something. We're having a very intense conversation about something. So we didn't really pay attention to what was going on until my uncle says, is that nigga sitting there eating watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> and it's and so when he's like, "Oh my God, he is that nigga has lost his mind." So then, but then we stop and we look, and it's like, "Oh my God, he is just sitting there, you know, chomping down on a watermelon." But what he's talking about as he's doing it was just like, "Man, that's." Yeah, that's true. That's kind of so. I'm I'm not gonna give in, anything away, but just to say that because people really do need to just. I, I agree, Jared. Watch that, and listen to what he says as he's talking, and it it is such. I think one of the best early indictments of certain folks that I became aware of. Um, and I I guess I was probably like 20 years old or something like that. But I was like, yeah, that's how we can be sometimes. <laughs> Mm. It's yeah. Anyway, it, and it really was on television. Um, anyway, so listen, there was a couple related uh, uh, stories to all of this that I just that I was hoping to get to, uh, and I'm asking for a gift for the help from for our, our dear brother Josh here because I don't know what uh, I'm gonna have to give. I'm gonna have to spend some time with this over the weekend to figure this out. Uh, what, what the plan is going to be going forward here, um, but. Uh, um, and 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 now that I'm even mentioning it, I don't even know if this is going to work because the links require. Um, uh, I mean, it, it, please do try to share it, but the links might require uh, a login. They might not show up because. Uh, Anyway, I, I am a, a subscriber. But anyway, if you could just leave it up at the top there. Yeah, just leave it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just leave it up to the top uh, and I'll just work work through it real quick um, because there's a couple things here that are just pretty interesting. Uh, uh, I like to read, you know, Ad Age, which is, you know, sort of the, the, the legendary industry rag about the advertising community because there's some, some sometimes some very 
interesting stories that I think we can make use of. And one of which is this one that is about the University of Texas who announced this week that the Richards Group founder, Stan Richards, will remain the namesake of its advertising school. The news came more than a year after Richards made a racist remark during a client meeting that forced him to step down from the agency. And then Josh, so if you could go to the second one, please, uh, um, and share that one, um, I would appreciate it because I, I wanted to start with that one. So, so first of all, to make the note, one, that there are advertising schools uh, um, at, at colleges and universities, uh, uh, Anyway, so so like as we were sort of talking about the other day, when people are saying, why aren't universities or students or particularly even HBCUs turning out radical scholars and activists, et cetera, and so forth, who have a certain media or, or a, a political analysis? This is one reason that there, there, there are business schools, there are advertising schools, there are journalism schools that are, 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 are you know, arranged on that very commercial uh, um, order of of trying to get money from um, the mainstream outlets that will hire their students eventually. So there's there there is this institutional push in this direction. And of course, as I want to continue to remind, as Marshall McLuhan said, advertising is a vast military operation. It is psychological warfare. So, um, so I just thought it was funny. So the Stan Richards dude uh, says something. Uh, uh, racist uh, in a meeting uh, <laughs> on a phone call. Um, who's who, uh, 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 the 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 originator, the founder, or the name, the 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 one who this this school's name? Anyway, the remark is uh, Richard's remarks during an internal meeting that a Motel Six ad was quote too black for the motel's white supremacist constituents, end quote, <laughs> triggered a hemorrhaging of clients, including Motel 6, Home Depot, and Keurig, Dr. Pepper. Since then, the agency has been trying to rebuild, recently winning agency of record duties for fiber optic provider Metronet. All right, mm -hmm. so, so, so the guy who's sort of who this thing is named after, who's sort of the leadership of, who has now just decided to step down. And, and in fact, what he said was, if we were a publicly traded company, I would have been fired. But since we're a private company, I'm going to fire myself. I think that's a pretty close to a direct quote. But what he was saying there, and thanks again, Josh, for helping out here, is that uh, the Motel 6 ad was too black. And I think this is interesting on a number of levels. Again, as I said, this is the guy who's in charge. This is the attitude that comes to, to, the, to the vast military operation of advertising. This is the name that will remain uh, 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 on the, um, you know what, I didn't even mention the university. Uh, which university is this attached to? Uh, university of Texas. University of Texas is going to keep the name on its advertising. So, so in an advertising school, I don't know, there's, there's so many levels of, of puns that have to be in here, right? You have an, you know, the, the advertising is the, 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 the name itself is now associated with this overt racist. You're going to keep the name and continue to produce students and marketing and advertising, uh, all coming out of that protected, I'm, thinking protected trajectory because if, if if he can't get fired for that then what the hell are we talking about by the way what the hell are we talking about all the, the so-called cancellation of so uh, of, of, of mm -hmm. black and other of entertainers and so on and so forth so so anyway this is this is because this is actually to me more institutional than a celebrity by the way well how, uh, how, how, how a, a are these university and named, a school though? how how, I mean, how, are these buildings, how, how are these buildings named like what what's usually hey. the process when these buildings are named it's usually because they gave a lot of money. money a money. lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? So yeah. they, they, do they do they want do they want to risk you know losing that and setting a precedent? Mm -hmm. Because other people will say, okay, well y'all oh y'all y'all doing that now? Okay, well let me hope withhold this money. You know, so at the end of the day, you know they they're gonna they're gonna follow their economic interests, and that's you know it, that the whole system is based on racism. I mean, so I, I I remember one time I think I was on the air with you, Jerry, years ago on your old show, and somebody. I think it was on your show, and I and I had made some comments uh, that I guess some of the white listeners didn't like uh, about racism. No, yeah, maybe I, I might do that every now. No, I mean, it's kind of 
you know, somewhat of an anomaly. I typically don't don't do oh that. I typically gosh. try to be politically correct. The uh, strength. But the but the person was saying talking about it was something around racism, and I'm like, are you? And he's basically trying to accuse me of being racist. And I'm like, look, dude, we live in a city called Washington D.C. You know that that's named after a fucking racist that enslaved 300 of my people. Okay. And, and, and you're talking to me about racism. You know, I'm talking to you. And they were compensated. Racism. Yeah. And they that. were compensated. Mm -hmm. When right. Lincoln did his whatever, whatever, right. they were the right. ones that got compensated. They were the ones that got uh, Yep. Because they yeah. lost their so, property. Property, yeah. And then mm -hmm. many of them after the, the so-called Civil War were allowed to relocate to South America where they continued. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people mm -hmm. may not be f familiar with the Confederates uh, down in South America. So they were able to continue that legacy and and, and 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 are really some of the people who are the forefathers of the current state of places like Brazil, where you have this kind of white supremacist, you know, uh, far right uh, leaning uh, kind of politics that, that that dominates down there and sub continues to suppress, you know, African people and, and other, you know, indigenous peoples down there. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that particular legacy continues right now. Um, and it's in this part of a system. And, and that's a nice segue because it's something I wanted to share Ooh. in terms of system. Uh, see, I'm learning about these segues up in here. I, I love, love it. I love smooth, it. Smooth. Uh, I love it. So there's this there's this this basketball player. His name is uh, Jalen Brown. He plays for the, the Boston Celtics, I think. And he's talking about uh, the situation with uh, Ahmaud Arbery. And I wanted to just share just share this piece here uh, with him talking about, okay, as I get that up and boom, and not that. Okay, the boomer moment, y'all leave me alone. I'm getting it together. See, see. I'm getting it together. No, it's, actually, it's actually- That's why I had- I actually, It's actually something wrong with my Chrome. And so uh, that's that's what we're going with, right? The Chrome, is the Chrome? Uh -huh. See, oh. <laughs> It's so foul around here. So, the, so the, yeah, the chrome screen. These, these reprobates, <laughs> these reprobates I keep trying to associate with. That's what All I right. get. <laughs> All right, so it should be, it should be, uh, it should be shameful. Can y'all see it? Yeah, I, but I see you're sharing. Uh, there it is, there it is, there we go. Yeah, yeah. so so Jalen Brown on Ahmaud Arbery and Kyle Rittenhouse. Try, and and I, I like what he said. He said, I'm tired of hearing the word reform. Reform doesn't work. And mm. and I think I think him just challenging. Whoops. I mean, he's he's, he's getting at oh. system. Uh, he says, "I'm tired of hearing the word reform. Reform doesn't work, in my opinion. If I reform my garage, I might change something. If I reform my house, I might change some stuff around. But it's still the same house." Oh. Uh, mm. And he's and he's so he's basically saying oh. that you can't you can't reform the system, that you can't change the system. Now, we, of course, we haven't heard a whole lot about this because the, the media is not going to really report a whole lot of that. So I thought that, that I thought that was just worthy of no. Uh, it is worthy of note, and he this brother's about to get his 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 LeBron call, and then his oh, Obama yeah. call. Obama call, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yep. uh, maybe in that order, uh, yeah. but the calls are coming. Uh, letting him know, you know, that's not oh, yeah. the direction you want to go in, my my dude. Uh, yeah. gonna, and I don't know, I don't know Jalen Brown. I don't know how good he is. I don't know if he's good enough to be taking these positions like this oh, he's publicly. Good. He's a pretty good player. Okay. And he said, and this, he went on to say the foundations of this country uh, were built on systemic inequality and racism, et cetera. And until we get to the root of things, we're going to keep having these same instances and we're going to keep having these same reactions. Oh, he's he gonna said. get his mm. democratic uh liberal shut up and play uh moment. He's yeah, yep. he's, that's coming. <laughs> yeah, um, I love I'm, his but, analysis, his analogy. That was a great anal analogy, but yeah, whoo, that's that's gonna cost him that truth. Mm -hmm. So um wow. Yeah, no, that's that's I'm uh, and shout out to him. I'm glad he's saying something, and and I'm glad that he's already tired. Um you know, uh, um, and, because, and it, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Here, here, no, here's, here's another quick thing that I saw earlier this mm -hmm. week about Biden, uh, Biden allowing the release of oil reserves, uh, but says that gas prices will not drop overnight. Of course, you, you, many of all of us have noticed that the gas is going up. I think California is like almost five dollars a gallon or something like that. It's just crazy. Oh, wow. Man. And uh, mm -hmm. and it's going up even here, but but they're tapping into these these extra reserves and the whole and, and, and people are like trumpeting this like this is a great thing, um, 
and it basically it was it was the part the part that I went. Oh yeah, the release is aimed at addressing the lack of su oil supply around the world, but its actual effect may be limited. Uh, in twenty nine in twenty nineteen, U.S. petroleum use averaged approximately twenty point five million barrels, so on and so forth. But the, that that first sentence, you know, addressing the lack of oil supply. First of all, there's no <laughs> lack of oil supply. They got plenty. There's plenty of oil. But people just uh -huh. they just the people that have it just hoard it in order to drive up the oil prices. That's number one. And number two, of course, we know that we shouldn't even be using oil um right in anyhow. But that's but but besides the point. I mean, we just thing. got back in the car and on the road like yesterday. So they <laughs> uh, there's gotta be still all that oil, all that gas piled up. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. but 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 this whole notion that capitalism creates is this this notion of scarcity to justify you know, raising right. prices when in fact there's really no scarcity, just like we know that diamonds aren't rare and a whole bunch of things that they claim to be rare uh, are not really rare, but they, they create this this notion of scarcity in people's minds. So if we think, well, it's, if it's rare, then I'll pay for it. Just like we're seeing the, the rise in prices of, uh, of, infl of inflation, a lot of it has to do with this whole piece around oil. And they're using that, this fake, you know, scarcity to, to drive up prices. And I just saw a story the other day, and I, I don't have that to share here right now. But they would, they they were, it was basically covering that, and 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 sh and they were interviewing people, and people were like, "Well, yeah, I'm willing to pay it because they know people are are going to be willing to pay the the prices uh, for these for these inflated prices." And they, and it's all based around the whole point is that it's all based around this this false narrative around around scarcity and there not being enough, and, or that there are too many people on the planet and there are too many people hogging up the resources, and that's just not the case. There was a book years ago uh that that came out um it was by this woman named case and i think she's died now but it's called the war against population and she in that book she basically talks about um uh, this notion of of overpopulation that there's not that the world the earth is not overpopulated and i think she wrote the book like maybe in the 70s or 80s and based on based upon you know her study of, of populations and demographics you know at that particular time and of course the world has grown much but still uh it's still relative she said at that particular time, based upon her studies, uh, demographers had shown that the whole world's population could actually fit within the state of Texas and have a good couple of square feet to, to themselves. You know, like the whole, I, I repeat, yeah, right. the whole yeah. the whole Earth's population could fit in the state of Texas. Like mm -hmm. there's the, the Earth itself is not overpopulated. If you've flown from the East Coast to the West Coast, like I have several times, there's large swaths of land in this country where you can fly over and look down and see that there's like nobody there. Like it's right. just it's just trees and forests and just 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 dead space, so to speak, you know, where nobody is there. So there, the, the world itself is not overpopulated. If anything, it's underpopulated, you know, if there's such a thing. You know, so, you know, no, I mean, I remember in it, this, this because this is that old Malthusian myth. I mean, right. that 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 I remember in even in undergrad in a science class, I, I always remember because I, I have these highlights of my most interruptive uh, moments as a student. And and this white woman teacher went into this whole thing in the middle of chemistry and she wrote Malthus on the board and was talking about overpopulation. And I was like, hold up. Uh, uh, and the whole class is sitting there and nobody's saying anything and I, or either didn't know to say anything. And I was like, hold up. I was like, this has been disproven all over. I was like, this is not the problem. The problem is too few got too much. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I keep remembering when we went to Zimbabwe and they were like the Oppenheimer family has a plot of land in Zimbabwe, the size of the state of Maryland. And I'm sitting there saying that that's that's the problem, right? Not right. It, it, you keep running this overpopulation nonsense. Never mind all the studies that show that if you if people are well fed and housed and have the material needs that they require, they don't tend to have enormous sized families that reduces the size right. of the families that actually which is have. why so we're really is, worried about population give people yeah. more what they need yeah, yeah well, sorry, which is why you, the more money people make the fewer children they have that's just, right I mean, exactly i mean like exactly. people that make more like right now relatively speaking you know most of us have more than most of our ancestors and relatively speaking i know right. i know that the world right, thing. Right. and so we don't have 17 like my dad my dad had 13 brothers and sisters <laughs> you know my mother has seven uh, six brothers and sisters you know, and and many of us can 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 go down the line. My family had fourteen, 15, you know. Right, so right. that, but nowadays people are tend they tend to make a little, you know, more money, so to speak. I know this is all relative, 
Um, but you know, so they don't have as, as many children. That's just, yeah. Hey, my yeah. joke is, my joke has become, you know, I, I'm like, when, when all the girls are in the room, I'm like, the reason we don't have more than two. And then I point to number one. I'm like, that's why I was like, it's like, you two are the reason you don't have more siblings. You know, you're, yeah, with your, that, with that your, was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the reason my mom gave. I asked her one time, how come you didn't have any more kids? She, she looked at me. She was like, well, don't you think you were enough? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Why you think I, I, my mother's only child? Why you think that right. is? She was but, like, you know listen, whole, I'll be damn if I do that again. <laughs> this whole it's a, overpopulation thing and this Malthusianism mm. that you, you notice it's usually very educated white folks who continue to propagate this idea. And it's just another like very pseudo intellectual way to um, promote eugenics because they're never talking about controlling the population of like Denmark, Sweden, Germany, um, you know, that no, they're talking about all of the the the, the South American con uh, countries, the African nations, you know, the darker countries. Oh, my God, it's too many people in China. China's a big ass country. They are right. You know, oh, a billion people. And, and there are literally cities in China where they where they did so well in anticipating um, the move from the one child policy in China. They were thinking that the population would grow. So they built a bunch of cities for people to live in, but the population didn't grow like they thought it, it would. So now there are all these empty cities, right? That, that will not all, but there are a few empty cities in Redistribution. China. It's re Redistribution. I, I mean, so, you know, this idea that, you know, population is a problem. There are too many people, all, you know, on the planet. What these people really don't want to say, what the, but what they really mean is it's too many brown people on this planet. It's too many non-white people. It's too many Asians. It's too, show enough too many Africans. It's too many, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Latinx people or, you know, indigenous descended people. It's too many of them on this planet. And we have to control the population of those people because Europeans are not having enough babies. That's that's what they're really saying. So let's so let me let me if I can, I got one more uh Kabad, are you pulling up something else? Did you have no, something no, else? No, no. Oh, okay, my bad. I was I, there was one more story that I wanted to get to that I'm very I'm actually kind of uh, uh, it's another from 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 the good folks at that age here. So I know we can't get to the whole story because it's 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 but but this was some, I can't show it at least the whole story. But I'm, I want to ask if we can uh, uh, check this out here for a second because. To me, I, you know, obviously we've been, you know, railing against crypto and all of that lately a lot uh, over here. But but to me, this is a, a, a slightly different uh, problem being developed, as I would see it, uh, related to to the blockchain technology, which undergirds crypto. And uh, and as we're going to talk about here, a lot of other things developing. Um, and from the one from starting with, the, as it says here, blockchain controlled community building could mean major shifts in the way brands connect to consumers. When the blockchain calls, how will social marketing answer? And what I think, again, is, is interesting about this is that for all of the continued in some circles debate around the positive uh, use of social media uh, and then ultimately, and then also of blockchain and crypto and all this revolution, revolutionary potential it's supposed to have for black people and other oppressed communities. This is to me uh, um, what often gets left out that those in power, those with more resources and control over the technology uh, uh, how they're using it and how they uh, intend to use it. So one thing that comes out of this article is it says here, uh, blockchain technology also means that in digital spaces such as the metaverse, the things you own follow you from place to place. Suddenly your digital selves and objects have a real world sense of ownership anchored to your digital self, not the digital spaces you inhabit. So as they're talking about increasingly going into a metaverse, a digital experience. And then I'll, in a second, I want to show you something that they're talking about here and, and that I'm, I've never really looked at, which I is, think is fascinating and spooky and all of that. Um, 
uh, they're talking about, as they say here, social media has a funny way of weaving itself into everything, marketing products, technologies, and even the mundane rhythms of our daily lives. Memes become fodder for morning talk shows and dances on TikTok, make their way into video games and music videos. Social media c- content can fuel communities that impact the larger culture. And now with blockchain technology on the rise, the nature of that impact could change. So they're talking about the ability to go into these metaverses, these digital experiences, and then bring real world value because they keep talking about the blockchain as a store of value, meaning that in the future, there's a potential for people to buy what is being sold and have it make money uh, for uh, its owner, et cetera. Um, And as the article continues here, it says, we are already seeing new communities emerging from blockchain and marketers are watching closely, whether it's gamers walking around Decentraland, which is what I want us to look at in a second, sports fans and collectors playing the uh, NFT horse racing game Zed Run or buying top top shot NFTs or again, non-fungible tokens or hobbyist investors talking on Discord about the latest cryptocurrencies, these communities are opportunities for brands to connect with people who may be interested in what they are selling or doing. Where is all this headed? An honest person will tell you it's really too early to tell how blockchain will ultimately change our relationship to social. But that doesn't mean that brands shouldn't start to pay attention. And then lastly, but with the efficiencies of blockchain comes a new type of 3D world, a metaverse with the expansive reach of a social of social, but where the help of NFTs with the help of NFT, NFTs actions and consequences have real world value and weight. They continue that it's all about the money. Another area where we can expect to see social content change because of blockchain is the proliferation of NFTs and the ability to monetize a piece of digital art or a digital collectible. Many of the platforms, most recently Twitter, have already conceptualized a future where social allows social allows users to more directly monetize their audiences. This would add a new wrinkle where each piece of content can be assigned a concrete value and sold. Because of this, the way people think about creating and posting photos, artwork, and writing might change as they look to turn their social content into NFTs and monetize in other ways. This new incentive can completely upend audience expectations with brands facing new norms and even wider competition for attention. Lastly, it would create, a, a, in, a, in what they call, in the section they call the new velvet rope, This would create a level of exclusivity and controlled access, segmenting the communities even more than they already are, end quote. My point in bringing this up for us is that once again, we are being, we are in a moment where we are told that social media, new media technology, blockchain, crypto, et cetera, are offering new ways for oppressed communities and underserved communities to express themselves, to make money, to challenge the system, uh, uh, to revolutionize our relationship to our real world experience. What is being shown here to me is that that is all a part of the mythology that these folks while making claims of changing the relationship between the social media world and our real world selves, they're showing that that is exactly not what's happening. In other words, if you want to monetize a photo, monetize a post, monetize your tweets, monetize your videos, you have to, as we are learning very well here at BPM with the YouTube algorithm, you have to appease the the uh, ideological worldview, politics, sensibilities of those who would fund that, who would pay for that, who would have the resources to support that. And all that's being created is I've been arguing previously around this, this NFT thing and the crypto thing is that all that's being created is a new way for an elite who have already captured the economy and already captured the wealth to determine what becomes popular artistically, social media wise, et cetera. Because if they're not willing to fund it, again, going back to our previous discussion, if they're not willing to fund it, there will be none. It won't exist. And the, and the, and the tweet I create and the photo Jackie creates and the song Kaba creates will not rise to the level of value unless rich white folks want to buy that product. It doesn't change anything in terms of the relationship that we have um, uh, to our media environment, to the economy, to the, to the world, more broadly speaking. It's just replacing it. So then lastly, 
uh, uh, Josh, if you could bring up number four for me, please. I just wanted to, I, 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 I don't even know what this, this Decentraland thing that they're talking about, um, just looks pretty wild. And then Josh, when you bring it up, if you could, since you'll be sharing it, if you can uh, go ahead and click through and let, let us look at it, it's basically from what I understand. I, and I never really played these games much like, uh, Sims or, or other, I don't know, world of Warcraft or whatever. I've never played these games. So I don't really know, but it looks like from what I understand, a, another immersive world into which, uh, like what we're seeing with Meta and the Facebook name change and all of that, they're they're trying to create this entirely immersive online experience where where again we just sort of go in, separate from our material selves, and then think we're having some sort of other experience. So if I can go into a digital world and create an avatar and start selling NFTs you know, like a, a a poster on my wall and my digital wall as an NFT and people buy it, I can somehow become rich and famous in that world. And that will have some something that I can take out in terms of cryptocurrency into this world and have material success here. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just, you know, it just sounds like that's that. In other words, they're trying to claim that if we go into this metaverse, this digital world, we'll be able to have an experience above and beyond what we're having here. And of course, that's probably true given that the material world isn't going to change. It isn't going to get any better. We're not going to have a, a greater distribution of resources, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. So here's the thing, um, Decentraland, that that article was talking about. And, and Josh, if you could scroll down or even just click get started and just see what it looks like, just show people a little bit... Uh, um, uh, and then feel free to share this one that you just shared with me here too. Plans for a Bitcoin powered, a Bitcoin city powered by a volcano have arrived in Latin America. Okay, I haven't even gotten to this story yet that he's sharing here. Good God. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We- <laughs> <laughs> Lord, that's just, just, I only have one. But by the way, <laughs> by the way, the only way to, I forgot maybe one of the main uh, tags here, the only way to get into Decentraland and actually start having it work is to open up your Ethereum cryptocurrency oh my wallet God, account. So oh. it's, 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 yeah. But apparently you can go in there and it looks like just from scrolling up and down on this page, it looks like that, that you could create avatars and, and create your, 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 your whole universe and 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 I don't know. And then you can take your cryptocurrency and go in there and actually buy things and sell things. Um and somehow this is going is is being promoted as as the again as as so this is, and then I'll 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 really stop here, but I think this is this is really where I'm trying to get at. When when articles like the ones I'm sharing are talking about it's going to change social or change how we engage social media or change how we do this or that they're talking about give by change they mean a new way for marketers and advertisers to capture an audience they don't mean that and then we have it interpreted for us and promoted to us as something that's going to change our lived experience Mm -hmm. it's going to make our lives it is the classic marketing technique applied to a new digital media environment. Um, but with, you know, all this discussion of crypto and the promotion around it, it looks like, I mean, it just seems like it's going to have a new level of energy and power. So anyway, we're, we're um, the card. look we're at that. It says you can sell land. Look, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I was going to yeah. say, we, we're, we're the cards underneath that whole Ponzi scheme. We're, we're the mm-hmm. cards holding it up. That's the whole point, you know, and as we talked about very early on, I think maybe the first, the second episode that I've joined, was that you know it's it's already too late you know it by the right yeah. by the time it becomes and I, you know, I just have to reiterate this hey josh stop the there real quick becomes, man. by the time it becomes popular and by the time it becomes the hottest new thing by the time most people know about it it's too late the people who are in the yeah. know they get inside information ahead of time they get up they buy up all of the even if even if it was something that was be you to be used for empowerment you know it's too late like you, you already it's empowerment, but it's not for you. It's not for me. It's not for us. It's not for the people. It's for the, the same old people, the same old oligarchs, the same old outfits that have been in control of economies now. And because, as as Jackie mentioned before, 
capitalism is declining in its in its new in its old iteration. They need a new way to to keep it to try to keep it alive, and so they're going to infuse this whole new economy, this whole yep. new way of yep. looking, and then they're going to posit it as a, some kind of revolutionary thing to get us to buy in, which is only going to prop them up and keep them up. Because again, just like capitalism, this is just another Ponzi scheme. Yeah, and but tell I'm me so if I'm wrong you, here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Jackie. You know, but you know, Brother Kaba, I'm so glad you said that about uh, you know how this is a new form of. Uh, uh, capitalism, because, you know, when we always say, you know, capitalism is on the decline, we always assume, I think people assume that, you know, after capitalism, then, hey, we'll have socialism or there'll be nothing else. No, capitalism itself, as we understand it today, like you said, will will absolutely no longer exist. What will replace it is this monster. What will replace, replace it is cryptocurrency and, you know, this kind of, you know, immersive uh, uh, experience in this kind of thing where people can, uh, they'll have an online digital marketplace that may translate some in some way in the real world for some people. But this is like the, this is like the, the suspicion that I've always had with cryptocurrency, even before I understood the really horrible environmental impacts that it has and also the exploitation of, of people uh, that it has in, in that cryptocurrency in a very weird way became the central conversation in a lot of white left spaces in how we're going to 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 further the revolution like cryptocurrency itself was this revolutionary thing and it seemed like such a departure from the conversation of actual organizing and actual revolution to how do we get all of these people who want a revolution to buy into uh, uh, Bitcoin and the blockchain and cryptocurrency so we can opt out of capitalism? So it seemed like a very cryptocurrency very, very early on to me didn't seem like, you know, this revolutionary alternative uh, financial system that could be used by revolutionary people. It very quickly turned into um, you know, the revolution. And it, and it seemed like a very intentionally placed uh, distraction from the actual talk of organizing, the actual work of organizing and the talk of revolution and political education to people having conversations and debates and arguments all about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and blockchain and and then deciding, well, if you don't agree that cryptocurrency is where we should go, then you're not really revolutionary. Then you have the splintering in the the, the, the left. And, and mm. at the time it was the white left, but increasingly more and more younger black radicals got in on this conversation. So I've always viewed these um, uh, electronic currency, you know, outside of the so, supposed market, which is a blatant lie. I mean, Bitcoin is traded on the stock market now. It's well, it but is, I mean, you know, so, it's the claim so I, that. You see, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. No. So, so you know, I've always viewed, and it's not that I'm against technology, and it's it, technology is great and it's fine, and it can do some do some things. But I've always viewed these kinds of advances in uh, um, uh, this kind of technology as an intentional way to subvert. Uh, to confuse, confuse and subvert actual organization and revolutionary movement. Yeah, I, and Josh, I do want to get to that that NFTs in just a second, but I wanted to leave this up on the screen because just because what we were, in, in addition to what everything uh, uh, Jackie Kaba just said, but what we were just talking about earlier about um, uh, Malthus and 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 overpopulation. If if Ted Turner and Bill Gates own all the land in real life uh, 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 and hoard it for themselves in real life, we're being offered the opportunity to go into this digital world, to this decentralized land or decentraland, mm -hmm. uh, and buy, as it says here, parcels and, and estates uh, and wearables and unique u unique names that are for sale. So on the one hand, it's also telling the truth that you can only buy what is for sale. Uh, um, but it's also saying here, hey, if you can't buy land in real life, just go in here and buy some. Uh, and maybe you can turn that into uh, a cryptocurrency that that will impact your real life wallet. 
uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a beautiful um, uh, you know con to 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 it, to expand both capitalism and the Ponzi scheme. So it can't expand in real life. So they got to create the digital world for capitalism to 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 invest for capital investment, etc. And then Josh, yeah, let's like, see this let's that, see this uh, marketplace when you get a chance. Why y'all getting that up? That sounds like this game that my kids play, my two youngest play, uh, this Roblox, where they they actually create their own land and create their own houses and. I was asking my son, what are you doing? He's I'm making a dog. I'm like, you're making a dog? <laughs> I'm like, making a dog? <laughs> He's like, he can create a dog and I'm making this. You know, so I think they're prepping, you know, the, the people like my children. So I got to I gotta have some deeper talks with them around this whole thing because they, they might get bought up and caught up in that stuff as well by thinking that they can buy a, a this central land some, someplace. So here's the marketplace. Uh, yeah, so like we could get, we could get, uh, uh, was that sunglasses? What is that? What is that? Uh, hats? I mean, like, <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> wow. Is that a warrior mask? Uh, you can get, I mean, yeah, and so the and these are all, I'm assuming these are, and these are the NFTs, I'm assuming that you can buy. Wow. Like you won't actually get this is my NFT shirt. It's like it's an NFT, right? You're not going to actually get a t-shirt. It's NFT. just a digital shirt. <laughs> wow it's an nft i mean that's that's and then you can buy NFT. what is that is that 50 ethereum is that what it's saying 25 ethereum 5000 ethereum uh so sure if somebody if if you can convince an investor i mean this is no different than the art world has ever been if you if you have a benefactor uh, uh, who will buy your art and fund you? If for those for those who watch this the series uh, um, uh, uh, billions, they were doing they had a, they had a version of this there, and and all the contradictions of a, of an artist who wanted to re retain his independence, but but when a billionaire came in there and was like, here's a whole bunch of money to live in a fancy penthouse and create art that I'm definitely going to buy, and other art that my friends are definitely going to buy, it changes. I mean, you know, it, mm. it, it it shows you the realities. And then when they want to pull the plug, dude has to make a choice. Do I paint for this dude or do I go back to the street and retain my uh, um, authenticity? This seems to be no different. I don't understand how this would be any different other than rather than a piece of art you can hang on a wall, you get a digital T-shirt. Wow. You know, and, I mean, and the art world is is predicated the same way that, uh, you know, the financial system is predicated upon. It's uh, predicated upon scarcity or, or you know, you have there's the land. Like these, I'm sorry. Kaba, have it. Those yeah. are the land parcels. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, my bad. Is, Go wow. ahead. Yeah. yeah. And you and you're one of you're one there's of the rare land. people who own it, you know, so so it, it's, it's about exclusivity as opposed to collectivity. You know, and and value is placed right. upon those who have the you know the most exclusive. You know, like unlike unlike the exclusive, you know, DJ Clue tapes back in the day when he used to yell exclusive. This is like <laughs> real exclusive. <laughs> what is this, Donald J. Trump? What is this? A, a million coins? What is that for a, a Donald J. Trump shirt? Is that what that is? Or I, uh, uh, I don't know. What is it? A name? You can name? buy names. What? Get out of here! You what? buy the name. Yo. So, mm. so it's almost like a. It's what does that mean? Like a, it's almost like having a, a, I guess, a website like you get douchebag, <laughs> <laughs> asshole. I mean, you can't, can't you just? Is that what that is? Somebody? These are domain names. <laughs> it, it's, so it's you kind of, like, you it like the first like, AOL. Like, yeah, it seems like it seems like it's the same concept. That's what it seems. I don't know that. <laughs> it's not. It's not Jared Ball three thousand and one at Hotmail. I get to be Jared Ball number one. The you saying? The oh, Jared Ball, the, the so che chief petty officer, and then right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so somebody creates Son. these, and then you pay the person who creates these for. I, I'm confused. See, okay, I, I hear you, Josh. Right, 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 right. Yeah, they might have some racist stuff. You don't know what's going to come up, right? We don't. Yeah, we we, we yeah. try not to traumatize the, the the remixers this morning. Yeah. See, as far uh, as I ever went with the Sims was literally Sim City. Once they started doing the, you know, people living life and doing, I was not playing the Sims. I I'm like I was real old school. I'm like that looks like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That looks like some some. Educate uh, me on uh, the Sims because y'all mentioned that. I don't know what that is. What is that? So, I, maybe I'm glad I don't know. <laughs> So if you think oh, of wow, Fortnite, yeah. yeah, if you think of Fortnite, if you've heard of Fortnite. Yeah, I heard of that. Yeah. Um, the Sims, I think, was like the precursor to Fortnite. Hmm. Um, and the Sims hmm. 
was it the sims was the spinoff of this city building game called sim city and there were several iterations of sim city and honestly sim city is like one of my favorite um computer games i love that thing um other than mist because i love the, the the puzzle ones but and the strategy ones but uh you build for sim city you build a city you're like the mayor of the city you have a budget um, and you, you know, do the zoning and you have to deal with the trash pickup and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to balance the budget, all that kind of good stuff. So it was so popular that they said, Hey, why not let's, instead of just let people build cities, why not have a SIM game where people can actually live in the cities and they have interactions with other SIMs, people, people in the simulated city. So they created a game called The Sims, where you are a person and you live a simulated life in this community. And so then there are several iterations of The Sims. And I mean, I never did The Sims because I just thought it was creepy that now we're talking about instead of just building cities, now you're a simulated person, like living a simulated life. That was just so I just never got into it, but a lot, a lot, a lot of people did. So I think uh, Ricky Ryan in the chat, I, I think accurately pointed out. I mean, they were just kind of conditioning people for this with Sim City. Mm. Sim City was the mm. precursor to, I think, all of this. And and I mean, really, if if you want to think about it, if if people are old enough to remember like Wolfenstein AD. <laughs> one of the first computer games yeah where people you were oh wow yeah yep yep before what what was that ms dos i think that was an ms dos that was before mm. windows that's how old uh, i am i remember when windows came out so yeah i remember uh, that but i don't remember yeah. i don't remember the game and, and I, you know and, i, and I thought game, you yeah. i thought you were saying because i was like i thought we already had a sin city i thought it was vegas but you're oh, saying no. Sim, Sim City. Sim, okay. Sim as in simulated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they might have been getting us ready for the Sims, but through Vegas, through Sim City. So They've getting us a long process. Yeah, the Sim, so, Sim City was one of my favorite games. And the other one, which I cannot find anymore, which is actually a really great like game to learn about the supply chain, is uh, Industry Giant. Um, and I, I can't even find it anymore. But, you know, I'm a geek like that. So uh, uh, Josh is like somebody actually owns an entire city called Dragon City owned by one user. So you can art, look at that. Somebody already bought up all that land. So it, 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 it seems like it's just like in real life. Like you can't, and then wow. and then what, what what comes next? They're gonna have like a little police force, and if and, and if and <laughs> yeah. if you if you if your black avatar goes in there, they get beaten up and dragged, and all that. Like is that is that is is that what? And they got a they got a cyber slush fund to pay to pay the. You know, <laughs> 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 got a little cyber prison. <laughs> So we can see digital digital gentrification take place. Um, wow. Real quick, wow. before we get out of here, I, I did want to. I did want to. We put the link up a couple shows ago to the digital version of this, but it came in the mail the other day, and I want to shout out again, Doctor Abdul Al Kalimat, for for not only his his uh, you know his new work on the history of Black Studies, but um, uh, his 10 point action plan, which I thought we could just quickly go over just very quickly because uh, uh, quickly go over very quickly. Um, I thought it was very interesting. Just 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 reading them. Number one uh, in, in the action plan is document the local history of black studies, which I thought was very interesting mm. that the, the that document local histories based on certain wherever we find ourselves of black studies in that region, which I thought is an interesting approach. Write a history of every black community. Document every community institution. Document the black liberation movement. Document black organizations. Compile comprehensive bibliographies. Document our black studies curriculum. That's I, I, I particular am moved by that one recently. Uh, document our conferences document our life stories and invent new ways to publish. So he goes into some detail for each one of these, uh, um, so, but, uh, uh, you know, fleshing it out farther and adding some context. But 
I just, uh, anyway, just wanted to, to, to follow through on bringing it up and, and uh, encourage people. And I'll put the link again to the digital version in the show notes to this episode uh, if they have it. Uh, but something that people can, you know, I think we can build from going forward. Anyway, so shout out to Dr. Alkali Mott and appreciate him for doing that. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I know for a long time, you know, this this trying to um deal with the shifting, you know, sand, so to speak, of uh uh of, of institutions, of movements, and trying to to figure out where black studies can make the most positive intervention. Um so, uh, you know, I know that that's uh, on his mind all the time. And, you know, so anyway, I'm interested to see if we can follow up on any of that. Um, so listen, anything else to the, to the two of you yeah, want to get to real, real quick? Real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Something real quick. Uh, just, just a sure, reminder sure. Uh, to the folks about uh, this situation, because it is kind of connected to a lot of the things we've been talking about in terms of wealth and things. Um, and that's this situation here. Um, I don't know. Can y'all see that? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there was oh, wow. a tragedy, Dungeons Dead, and the Channel tragedy after inflatable boat sinks off the French coast. And of course, these are, are migrants, uh, mm-hmm. including a young girl who was among 27 people who drowned in the bitterly cold waters of the coast of France, mm-hmm. off the coast of France on Wednesday after an inflatable boat carrying migrants bounced, uh, a bound for Britain capsized in one of the deadliest incidents in the English Channel in recent years. And so the French government, the British government are trying to, you know, they're they're nominally, you know, at least ostensibly, so they say, are trying to, you know, address this. And there's an international organization for migrants missing uh, migrants project said that the tragedy was the largest loss of life in the channel since they began collecting data in 2004. And basically uh, they're saying that uh, moving down, Uh, Those primarily responsible for this despicable situation are the smugglers, that is to say criminals who for a few thousand euros organize human trafficking from Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, Asia, and whom who then use these people to bring them uh, to Belgium, the Netherlands, France, especially to cross the channel uh, to go uh, and to go to Great Britain. Now, of course, you know, at the end of the day, you 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 can look at the smugglers, sure. Uh, but the smugglers are a consequence of, of course, the system um, that that created this poverty, that created the problems in those countries, where in which uh, folks uh, feel the need that they have to need, leave their countries. Um, when we look at places, for instance, just like uh, like in Libya, where people are, we've seen in recent years, uh, where they had a stable government, um, where we go to South America, um, where where people had stable governments. Uh, governments that were, you know, trying to help the the people, um, uh, many socialist governments, uh, Africa, the same. I mean, wherever we go, wherever you go, where you find these people leaving their their countries, you're going to find some kind of Western intervention that caused the economic collapse of the countries, which then precipitated people risking their lives, you know, because no people are not, you're not going to risk your life unless that's what I'm saying. Right. Situation. So, so this is what happens. So you. So, but they want to put the scapegoat on the the smugglers who are basically just taking advantage of a situation that was caused by them. Mm-hmm. If you if if anybody ever talks to an uh, um, an unpressured or you know uh, um, uh, I don't know uh, you know someone who can speak honestly and freely about their immigrant experience, nobody is dying to get here like that. Like nobody will get wherever they're going. Like people don't want to leave home. Right. Duh. They just don't want their homes to be put in a situation where they have to, where they feel like they have to. And why would people risk their lives dealing with smugglers and so-called coyotes and all these other and folk? Money. Like, why do that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I saying, mean, like, but, but but so but the problem, the 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 problem are the smugglers. I love it. I I, <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. Is 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 uh anyway. Um Look, I mean, they got the playbook. They got the they got the 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 branded messaging, and it, and it's global. Um, you know, if something pops off, it's always the 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 poorest, most desperate, uh, lowest on the 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 power the you know power ranking who gets blamed. Yeah. Um, and 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 to know. blame the yeah. smuggler means that you to go after a dealer, a smuggler, 
uh, intermediary, which is all these people are. Uh, the, these are people that that just are intermediaries. To go after them is really to say that you're really not trying to solve the problem, exactly. because right. because those those intermediaries are, are are a consequence of a larger problem that that creates the the lane for them to be you know what they are you know and that is a conduit for people to to get from one place to another. So instead of attacking the actual system, the actual policies and and things that actually are the the root cause. You know, they they want to give the appearance that they are trying to do, quote unquote, do something about it by going after the low hanging fruit, which which is the easy person to look at, which is the smuggler, because that's the most that's the most visible uh, culprit. When, in fact, the, the ones who are re the real culprits are the ones that are um, that are working uh, behind the scenes in terms of uh, creating the system to begin with. Yeah, I mean, Dr. King used to, he had that, that that great quote about these are the derivative crimes that people always want to pay attention to. Like, obviously, we don't want black people hurting each other or people whatever hurting each other. But these are not, these are the derivative crimes of a society that is set up in, 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 in this way. The real crimes of society go unjudged. So yeah. anyway. Yeah, which is why. We're Listen, like, we, yeah, go ahead. Have, Sorry, Jack, you had no, no, which which is why we have this, you know, we have now, you know, the rise of the uh, uh, digital universe where people can go in and live a life that they can't live out here. And and I'm all of this effort to not do anything to make society just and equal, uh, because if you did, then, you know, nobody would want to be living in, in a digital universe. Nobody would want to leave their country and be, you know, stuffed into a shipping container um, for hours. And now who, nobody wants to do that. That is, that is a desperate move by human beings who are trying to survive. So um, rather than address the reasons why people have to feel like they have to um, uh, resort to these desperate measures to survive, and make society just, you know, the people who actually profit off of this desperation just deflect from the fact that they're the ones who are profiting, profiting off of the desperation they create. Listen, uh, Jackie, Brother Kaba, everybody, I really appreciate you all coming through this morning. You all, of course, are welcome uh, anytime at all times, uh, helping us get through another boom bat breakfast here on Black Power Media. I do want to uh, invite and encourage folks to continue to uh, click join, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get your notifications. I think there's some more uh, programming coming today. Kalanji teased some earlier. I don't know, Sister Jackie, when what what your schedule is, uh, but we know you you when you pop up, we don't want to we want to make sure people don't miss that. Um, we got uh, Uncle Devin tomorrow morning. Warrior class will be coming who, back. Who has this uh, been nominated? Is, Uncle Devin's been nominated for a children's yes. Grammy. Yes, by the he way. has. So shout out to Uncle and Devin. and. Yep. And even though I come from the old school of who gives a fuck about a goddamn Grammy, <laughs> when it comes to brother, un, un, brothers like Uncle Devin, we all, you know, we got a big up there. all the yeah. all the yeah. flowers need to get to those who, you know, mm -hmm. let, you know, I know that's big for him. So we we, we support that. And his work is really incredible. Um, so uh, shout out to him as well. And, and, and that whole crew and uh, uh, shout out to the Warrior Class crew Sundays with Ear Doctor. I'll be back Monday morning and I don't know exactly what's happening, but I know uh, Yusuf Bunchy Shakur is going to be coming through. So we, at least nice. that much is happening. So, and then we'll see. So Jackie, I don't know. Are you doing something this weekend or, uh, here? I don't know what you, uh, or, yeah, or I'm, just, I'm, people, just, yeah. Yeah. I am trying to secure a couple of interviews with um, a journalist and uh, um, an attorney uh, involved in the ongoing struggle in uh, Swaziland and Eswatini, the people have been rising up against the uh, monarch, the last monarchy on the continent. Um, mm. And, you know, he's a crony and the people have been, they want him out. And he has been literally chasing people down, trying to imprison them. Folks have uh, left the country. They are in exile. And a couple of those people uh, and they've been reporting on uh, what's been going on in the country. So I'm hoping to get an interview with the journalist today. 
Uh, and I'm trying to get an interview with the attorney who is defending um, another one, who the, the former MP who was uh, imprisoned, the, the, the attorney and the MP was imprisoned by the king. And the, they're still mm. trying to go after him. And there are, of course, a lot of connections with the U.S. and France and all that <gasps> bullshit. So I, really? I hope I'm able to do that. To Yeah, it's 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 wild. Um, so I, I'm right. hoping I can Press I can pull that off today, but if I cannot get that, <laughs> you know, the French, mm. the, the the French, the French always in in some shit on the continent. What is the refrain of, of on France again? Fuck France. Okay. Fuck right. France. Or, or or if you want to be politically correct <laughs> and linguistically correct, uh, Mel de France. So there you go. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Pardon Duolingo. your French. Let that little right. <laughs> <laughs> not pardon the French, pardon, pardon your French. French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if I cannot get that interview out, I've been thinking about um, doing a show on uh, abortion and and the narrative. Oh, wow. Something light, uh, something light and something, easy. Something a little bit light. You know, the narrative we get, especially among among us black radicals on abortion and the black genocide and that kind of thing just because i'm curious mm. about it i saw somebody comment about it and i thought hmm i don't think that's accurate and then i started doing a little bit of research and looking at the numbers and i'm like well damn <laughs> so yeah i i, uh -oh. I may do All that. Right. One, one of those is coming uh uh this week france uh, this or week. abortion Pick one. This, I this, don't know. What, what do you uh, want? Abort, abort France. How about <laughs> that? Just, just there there it is. two worlds. Abort France. That? That's there we go. it. Let's do that. We that's, can all agree. That's it. We all agree tonight. We all agree that the world have a very serious problem. <laughs> problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's France. Abort France. <laughs> Y'all still, you, we remember you didn't even let Malcolm in that time. Exactly. You blocked him at the airport. We're never going <laughs> to on the long list of crimes. We still even remember that one. <laughs> All right. Hey, look, hey, hey but uh, wait, 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 real quick. Yeah, didn't, my, I see, did, 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 didn't I see the return of, of something here on BPM? Didn't I see the return of, of a familiar face? Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I thought I saw something. Maybe not. Okay. All right. I, I didn't want to say it. Uh, uh, okay. All right. I'm uh, looking at y'all's faces. I honestly do uh, not know what you're talking about. I, okay. All right. Well, I let it go. Yeah. I'm. I don't okay. Know. I let it go. I, my bad. I, maybe I missed something. I, I don't know. There, maybe I missed something. It was you. No, it was it was Jackie. She was she came back. That's what it is. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Oh. Saving, okay. Save, oh. Saving, saving. I'm trying to save face now. Uh, save okay, face. Yeah, save. Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll be it. I'll help you fellas. Yeah. Save face. Okay. I'll be that. <laughs> Shout out to Red Man. So listen, I didn't. I, I I stayed out the chat for now, but I do check it later, and those who will see this later, just like my man Pierre says, we do invite you to say anything and leave Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments, and we'll catch you next time here at I Mix What I Like. Peace, because we know you're willing to fight for it, like the real Fred Hampton Love. used to say. Thanks again, everybody. Take I care. mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.